Hey guys, Smith from Minute Maintenance coming at you again with this 2009 Chevy Traverse. Causing more issues for this owner. And bad for her, good for us. It means we got something to work on. Today we got a power steering leak. We got to try to get it figured out. Stick with me. We're going to do a little hackery to get this car back on the road. Save some money because the Democrats are killing the economy. But that's okay. Let's get after it. Let's get some maintenance done. All right, guys, before me, we have this 2009 Chevy Traverse, and take a look right here. Now, this puddle here, that is all power steering fluid. She's been battling a power steering fluid leak for the past couple of days. She's been dumping fluid in there. I mean, honestly, guys, power steering pumps really aren't that necessary. I mean, you think back to stock car racers, think back to anybody who's trying to cut weight, weight on their car. Lots of people pull out the power steering pump, remove the lines, just call square, get those nice Popeye-sized forearms. Look at those bad boys right there, but not having a power steering pump. But she wants a power steering pump on this vehicle to be working. So she's been dumping fluid in there because obviously if you don't have the fluid in there the pump will burn stuff out that's a bigger problem to deal with now when i was looking over this vehicle i noticed that what's called a power steering cooler they got oil cools transmission coolers now they have power steering coolers what that is is an extension of your power steering line with some radiator type fins on it if you think about your radiator so it captures airflow and it cools down the fluid that runs within that line Okay, so it just takes your, your power steering fluid and just gives a little extra longer route to go through in front of your engine, in front of the bumper there, so that it gets more air, cools down the power steering fluid. The fluid is cold as opposed to hot. It lasts longer, it doesn't break down as much. It's better for the pump and the hosing and everything. Super grand golly, but it has a leak in it and it's leaking fluid everywhere. So even though she's putting some in there, it's just massively leaking out. So what you can do is you can buy yourself a power steering cooler or We'll do a little hackery today and see if we can get this vehicle back on the road because there's no power steering coolers in stock here in Cedar Rapids. So what's the hackery we're going to do, guys? First, let me show you the, the leak, and we'll go from there. Let's go ahead and get underneath this vehicle. And it's a tight fit, guys. It's a tight fit. Now, when you're actually going to be doing this, what you're going to have to do is jack up the car and pull off the front shielding down here. The windscreen guard's just held in with a bunch of plastic pushpin clips, but... I actually don't live in this town. I just came to drop my kids off at school and she told me she was having this issue. So I'm kind of, I got pliers, a screwdriver I bought, and a brake line that we're going to use to try to bypass this power steering cooler is what we're going to do. Because if you look right in here, guys, you see that? Those two metal lines, metal line one and two, and those fin shapes, that way, that's your power steering cooler. It's just like the fluid goes through there, those fins capture the air, cools it down and brings it back. Well, there's a severe leak in that. So what we're going to do is try to bypass that by using a brake line. I'll turn the light on here. All right, guys, see if we can make this work. And I don't know how well this is going to work. So if we shimmy underneath here, we're into the front of the vehicle here. So you see those two rubber hose clamps there onto that metal line there? Those two rubber hoses, one at the bottom, one at the top, those come right off the power steering pump and then one leads right off your power steering reservoir. Top one comes to the reservoir, bottom one goes towards the pump. What we're gonna do is disconnect those hoses and connect to a new hard line that's not part of the cooler, therefore bypassing the cooler, therefore bypassing the leak, hopefully. And how are we gonna do that? Well, what we're gonna use is some brake line. You can pick up some brake line in different lengths and different sections from any auto parts store for a couple of dollars. So I went ahead and I stopped at Harbor Freight, bought myself a two dollar pliers, three dollar pair of flat screwdriver, a couple hose clamps, and I picked up a power steering, I'm sorry, brake line here. It came straight. I started bending it already from O'Reilly. Now, I went with the 3 8 inch because it was the biggest width because power steering fluid, I wanted to be able to flow through there appropriately, and I already started putting a bend in it. So I know what you're thinking. How did I get this bend in this particular brake line? Well, let me show you how I did that. All right, guys, what I did was I used my steering wheel. Now, they make pipe benders and make brake line benders okay basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to put a bend in this thing with minimizing the kink okay so you want to try to keep as much width as possible so what you what i was doing was i took the brake line here i wrapped it around my steering wheel and i just slowly started bending it little by little not fast obviously i'm big and strong i could bend it as quick as i want but it's going to put a kink which could put a break in it which would stop the fluid from going or causing the leak which isn't what we're trying to do so i started making a bend on this side started making a bend on this side i'm slowly going to start making my way bending it on the steering wheel because it's round until i get the angle i want now if your steering wheel is all jacked up for some reason or you don't think the width is big enough on this you can use your trailer hitch guys you can use the ball on your trailer hitch you can use a socket or you can spend the 10 bucks at harbor freight which isn't that much money i'm just trying to save money today since it's not my vehicle and i actually own a pipe bender at home just 30 minutes away that i'm just using items around that i can 
that I have at my disposal that are round in shape, that are sturdy, that I can slowly add pressure to bend the line the direction I want. So I'm gonna keep working on this until I get it zoop, a nice U shape. All right guys, there you go. And that's pretty much good enough. Now those rubber hoses that are coming off the main power steering reservoir and going to the power steering pump the themselves they're rubber and i don't have a lot of space down there guys as you as you had seen the oil cooler comes out and makes a sharp turn to the left that goes all the way around the front weep, all the way around the front of the vehicle so i only have limited space between where those hoses are to actually could possibly hit the front windscreen or the front bumper you'll see what i'm talking about when we get under this so this is about all the length i need what i'm going to do is take the the pliers i bought that happen to have like a wire cutter section on it and i'm gonna start slowly hacking away till i have this extra length down here cut off and it's about evened up but let's go ahead and uh start working on that all right guys now what i'm gonna do is try to keep these evened up just for length purposes i'm just gonna take my pliers here put a little pressure start rotating back and forth hacking my way through and so as you see guys i'm just taking this and I'm just grinding it back and forth hacking away at it using the sharpness and the pressure from the pliers on the wire cutter part to cut through. Now, this is a steel line. They make steel lines. They make copper brake lines. I want the steel one because it's sturdier. Um, copper bends easier. That was a concern of mine. I didn't want it to bend too much. That pinches off. Also, copper prices are crazy expensive guys. I mean, people are stealing stuff and stripping copper all the time. So I didn't want to deal with that. Steel was a little bit cheaper as well. It's a little bit stronger. And again, this is just a simple bypass we're trying to do so we can get this vehicle back on the road without burning out that power steering pump. So I'm just going back and forth. If you have a hacksaw, that'd be great. If you have an angle grinder, you can do that. I'm not just going to cut it that way because it's going to pinch my line off. I do not want to pinch the line off. I want to be able to have fluid run through. All right, once cut through far enough, then you can just, boom, look at that, and it's not pinched off. And if I want, I can just take my screwdriver or a socket or something, uh, a socket extension, stick it in there and just wall out that hole a little bit, which I'm going to do because I want to try to put a flare in it like this side. And they make special tools for flaring um, for brake line purposes. I just like to add a little bit of flare like this on this side as well, just so that when you put that rubber hose on just and the clamp, just a little extra stoppage. Gives a little bit extra security as opposed to having this nice, slick, smooth thing and you're relying on pressure to hold in place. If you have a little bit of a flare in the end, the way it comes flared on that side, because you see, stops that from going. Put a little flare on it, same thing, holes and clamp aren't going to slide off as easily. So let's put a little flare in this and then we'll start working on the bottom end, getting those hoses off. All right, guys, and there you go. As you can see, I went ahead and I took my flathead screwdriver. And I just went in there and I just wallowed it out, working around back and forth, not trying to take away too much metal on the inside because I don't want to weaken it on the inside. Just doing a little bit of bending back and forth just to make the tip of this wider than the rest of it. I know it doesn't look like much, but check this out. I can't get that piece to slide past. If this was completely, you can hear it stopping. If this was completely flat tubing, then that metal rivet would, would fly right off. Now, obviously the flaring isn't to the same degree as this, not nearly as, as wide or as smooth, but I just needed a little bit of flaring on this end, just enough to give the, the rubber hose and the hose clamp something added extra to grab onto to stop it from just one and just whoop, whoop, reasonably slide off. But next, so if it'll stop this, it'll stop that. All right, so now that we're, we're here, and gosh, this space is just so tight to work with. I'm wearing one of my favorite tank tops because I wasn't expecting to do this today. Now it's going to be covered in oil and be thrown away. This is ridiculous. Now what I'm going to have to do is loosen up hose clamp one, hose clamp two, and then take those rubber hoses and attach them to our new bypass. And there's just no way for you guys to watch me do that. But just trust me, that's what's going to happen. All right, so I got one of the hoses attached to the bottom hose. Now let me show you here. Now this is part of the brake line that I'm replacing with. The power steering line to bypass the cooler. You got the two broken lines there that came off the cooler. That's in the ball. One of them actually was broken at the cooler. And let me show you down here. Ah, one of them was actually broken on this on that top portion right here. So fluid goes in, gets cooled down by all those fans as it goes to the pipe, makes a bend on the other side, comes back through, and just feeds through this way. Well, this top one was actually broken. This is the side that was weeping. So that's went ahead and snapped it off anyway, just to make it easier to pull them off the hoses that I'm getting at. And I was able to get the bottom line here. I got that attached. As you can see, let's turn the light on. As we can try to see here. Do, 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 where are we at? So I got the bottom hose there attached to my line. I, don't worry about those threaded, the big nut thread there, the part that manages the clamp. So I ended up shoving the brake line in a good four or five inches as far as I could just so it had extra length and I clamped down real hard. Okay, now 
the issue I'm running into right now is trying to get that top line on there. And the reason I'm having a hard time getting the top line on there, remember I talked about that flare, making it even, giving a little extra resistance for when the line might want to try to pull itself off. Well, guess what? Same thing, resistance trying to get it in there. So I'm having a hard time being I have this front bumper. If you guys go to the extra mile of jacking up the truck and pulling off all the push pin rivets to get the bottom windscreen off there you'll be a lot easier because you have direct access to it right now i'm just underneath small window very i can only get one hand in at a time trying to get that to attach so what i'm going to do is come up here i'm going to see right here this power steering reservoir you get to it by taking off your oil cap which is now up here and then just pulling on this it pops right up i'm going to disconnect that line because this rub it's just a rubber hose that goes straight down to connect down there okay the rubber hose is loose i haven't attached anything so what i'm gonna do is disconnect the line from here so i can attach the hose from underneath the vehicle because it'll be a lot easier with me because i can have two hands because i have it dangled down and work with the two hands and then run the line back up so that's my next step is to get my pliers here and undo that connector this clamp it's just a pressure clamp to get that hose off there we go, and I should have mentioned before, as you can see, this is the nipple on there. I should have mentioned this before. If there's any fluid left in your line, like it's a small leak you're having with, when you go to undo these clamps, you're going to pour all the rest of that fluid out. I just took the hose off, nothing came out because this thing's bone dry. So, this connects up here. You can just take a pair of pliers and grip on that tooth and that tooth and squeeze together to loosen up the clamp. Or you can have to take a flathead screwdriver, stick, stick it in there. And just prying a little bit, just relieving some pressure, as use the other hand to work the hose off. Now I'm gonna take the bottom end here, and I'm gonna work it from the bottom with two hands, unfortunately unable to film, attaching it to our the final leg of our bypass, then run the hose back up. All right guys, so everything's hooked up. I double checked that all my hose clamps are nice and tight. One of them failed on me, so I had to replace that. So that was a, that was a bit annoying. So we'll put this oil cap back, because now we're gonna refill the power steering reservoir. Don't want any oil to splash in there. And before we start the car, we're going to refill the power steering fluid reservoir. I don't have a funnel, so let's see how my aim is today. And we're going to see what our fluid situation is like. Are we leaking immediately out the gate? we got to fill up the reservoir. It's got to fill up the hose itself. Before, we want to make sure do we have any leaks. Are our clamps tight enough? Was the leak somewhere else besides the cooler? Definitely was coming from the cooler. But was there a leak somewhere else that we didn't know about as well? We'll slowly fill this up and we'll start the car. All right, so now the car is moving. You can see all the air bubbles that are popping up here. You see that? This thing was bone dry. The pump was completely dry. So now it's got to try to purge all that air out. Moisture got mixed in there. Power steering fluid, brake fluid, it's brake fluid especially, but even power steering fluid. It's hygroscopic, meaning it absorbs water. Um, so let's go ahead and put this cat back on there. Let's see what our steering situation is like. Can I one hand this guy? Look at that. Power steering is back. You hear that noise? It's whining. That's okay. It was bone dry. It's got to refill the system. So we'll walk this through a couple times. We'll do this a little bit in the driveway. We'll take it for a test spin. And we did that. Let's go crawl underneath, boys and girls. Do we have any leaks? Let's put a cap back on this, guys, because <clears throat> it is just my luck. I'm going to crawl underneath. I think I have the angle right, and when I'm getting up, I'm gonna kick that over and spill fluid everywhere. All right, so let's take a look. Let's take a look at the top. I'm not seeing any active leaks from down there. I'm not feeling any active leaks on my feet. I know the section I replaced. So let's come right back underneath here. Let's take a look. look over here, this is where actually this one of my host clamps right there. And it seems to be holding. Nothing there. Nothing's leaking on my phone, nothing's leaking around here. That's that bottom hose clamp that goes straight to the power steering pump itself. I just replaced that one because the one back there, as you see, it's hanging on that nut there. That one, it failed and it stripped itself out. I always replace the hose clamps. I thought I could get away with using the, the old one because I bought two big size new ones. You can see how much extra lead there was on that because it was too big, but it works. It's fully threaded, so it works, but I thought I could get away with using the old one, but I couldn't, and it failed on me. So, and on those type of clamps, guys, those style of clamps, we just twist on by hand, hand tight, guys, please, for goodness sake, hand tight. 
do not over tighten them they strip really easily so everything seems to be functioning Whoop, flip this around everything seems to be functioning i'm gonna get all this button back up i'm gonna take first spin around the block then i'm gonna come back through and check the power steering fluid again make sure the level is at the right point there's too much in there takes them out it's not enough top it off but the cooler guys as i was saying it just runs you can see that you can see that that metal bar and those fins okay and it comes comes there, makes that bend, whoop, 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 and then just speeds back to the power steering pump. And the point is to capture air as you're flowing. Air comes through here, cools that down, cools down the radiator, okay, identical fins. If you have an oil cooler, transmission cooler, all up here, it'll do the same thing for it. Cools it down. The colder the fluid, the better use and life you have out of it, the less wear and tear you're going to have. So. And there you go guys, just like that, we were able to bypass our power steering pump cooler with our brake line because of the solid line we went steel. And we were able to use our steering wheel in our car instead of having to pay money for a bender. We used the steering wheel in our car to bend the line slowly but surely. Slow Today guys, moral of the story today, slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady when you're tightening your clamps. So one, you don't strip it out. Two, you don't break it. Three, you don't over tighten it and, and actually crimp the line somehow or cut into the rubber hose. And now you just have yourself a leak and you replace the whole hose. Slow and steady when bending the brake line. If you're going to do that by hand or even if you're using an actual pipe bender, it takes time. Slow and steady. You don't want to break it, okay? Slow and steady wins the race today. And so I apologize for my appearance, guys, because this is a rough job. A lot of oil, a lot of fluids leaking. I'm not at home. I don't have my tools. I don't have my towel. I had a nice shirt, had a nice pair of jorts. But that's out the window. But hey, that's all right. We got this car back on the road for today. We saved her 150 bucks, which is how much the power steering cooler would have cost. We saved her pump from being able to be burnt out because now there won't be any fluid leaks. There won't be any moisture being introduced into the system. So the pump will be safe. On this Traverse, Equinox, GMC Acadia, very similar vehicles. They all have those power steering cool coolers. It's a stupid thing. It's just caused the more things you add to a system, the more likely you're going to have a fail at some point. Clearly it failed at this point. But... Instead of having to wait for that cooler to come in in a couple days, because it's not generally a, a shelf stock item, we went ahead and we bypassed the line. That's going to get her just fine. She can drive this thing all day long. So again, I'm going to test drive it some more, make sure that those, those clamps are going to hold up to the pressure, that the fluid's in the right spot. Guys, please, comments, questions, drop those below. Like, subscribe, and as always, take a minute out of your own day. Do some DIY hackery. Let's get some maintenance done, guys. We'll catch you next time.